Here we're going to be looking at an operating lease. And an operating lease is the same as a capital lease, except with these exceptions here. The le for the lessee's accounting, the asset lease does not appear on the lessee's balance sheet, only they recognize the rent expense for the current period of the asset lease. And from the lessor's accounting perspective here, the ownership of the asset remains with the lessor, and then it's depreciated and expenses are incurred for the asset here by the lessor. So let's go look at our example here. Uh, first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set up a lease amortization schedule and we'll be using the effective interest method here and we're doing that here just to calculate the interest expense on this lease. So first looking at our example here we have an operating lease one year lease 10 year life of the asset a nine and a half percent implied interest rate and the fair value is $150,000 and we're going to calculate our present value of our minimum lease payments to be $85,000 uh, $140 here and then our testing of this lease here the lease term is one year which is uh, one year is less than the 10 year uh, li economic life of the lease so that means that it's less than 75 percent of the economic life so it would be an operating lease here and then the present value of the payments the 85,000 divided by 150,000 here gives us 57 percent and then for our testing that's less than the 90 percent fair value of the lease that would be required for it to be a capital lease here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go over here and we have to set up this amortization schedule here uh, and looking at our amortization schedule we know the payments that are going to be received on this lease here and we know the expenses that are going to incur on this lease here those executory costs would be the maintenance costs and that forth but what we have to calculate is this interest expense here on this lease and to do that the first thing we have to look at here is these minimum lease payments what is the minimum lease payment well we've got this payment here of twenty two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars that's going to be paid on that lease each period but then there's an expense here of two thousand dollars so we have to uh, subtract out those executory costs so those expenses here would be for maintenance and that so we come up with a minimum lease payment here of twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars so that would be what our principal amount starts on that lease here twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars and then the other thing is we have rent payments that are due at the beginning of each year here on this lease for this uh, example here and let's fir first thing we ha next thing we have to do is we have to uh, calculate the capitalized uh, present value of the minimum lease payments here and uh, we do that here by taking the present value of those lease payments they're twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars here those are the minimum lease payments after the expenses were subtracted out we discount those back at that nine and a half percent interest rate and we get a present value minimum value of the lease um, payments here to be eighty five thousand one hundred and forty dollars so we would use that in our amortization schedule here as the capitalized amount here of the leased asset at eighty five thousand one hundred and forty dollars now to calculate our interest expense here so uh, starting with our first year here we just take the twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollar principal amount here or those minimum lease payments and subtract that here from the um, starting balance here of the capitalized leased asset here of eighty five thousand $140. That gives us a balance here of $64,890. Now we take this amount here times the interest rate for the period which is nine and a half percent and that gives us our interest expense here for the for in this case year two at $6,165. Now this interest expense uh, plus the principal amount here that would be paid for that lease each period here uh, has to equal the principal amount here or the minimum lease payment that we start or we have for the lease here of twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars so just taking the sixty one hundred and sixty five dollars from the twenty thousand two hundred and fifty dollar uh, uh, minimum lease payment here gives us a principal amount here of fourteen thousand eighty five dollars here for the in this case for year two subtracting that from the previous balance here of sixty four thousand eight hundred ninety gives us our new balance here of fifty thousand eight hundred and five dollars times nine and a half percent interest gives us a interest uh, for the period in period three here of forty eight hundred twenty six dollars subtract that here from the previous principal amount and that gives us here or 
subtract that here from the minimum lease payment, excuse me, $20,250. That gives us our principal amount here of $15,424. So uh, this interest expense here always has to be subtracted here from the beginning principal amount here, the minimum lease payments to determine what the, uh, princi or what the principal reduction for this lease liability would be for the period here. So we just continue on amortizing in that fashion until we come up with a zero balance. So the next thing we're going to look at here is, well, we have to calculate the depreciation as well on this thing. Uh, so we have the present value of the payments in this case, the present value of the minimum lease payments here divided by the assets life here. So present value of the minimum lease payments was $85,142 divided by the asset life of 10 years gives us a depreciation amount of $8,514 for the year. So now we've got our amortization schedule set up here and we know what our depreciation amount is. So now we can go and record this lease here. Now let's look at recording this operating lease on the balance sheet here from, from the lessee's perspective here. So the lessee company, that's the company that's using the asset here. So from the lessee's accounting perspective, the asset does not appear on the lessee's balance sheet. A lessee only recognizes the rent expense as this asset is used or leased from the lesser company here. So all we're concerned about from our amortization schedule here is this payment here for the lessee company or the company using this asset here. The expenses and the, uh, the other expenses, the interest expense here and any uh, uh, recognizing of the leased asset, that belongs to the lessor or the company that's leasing this asset to the lessee here. So all we're going to be looking at is this payment here. So the first thing we have to do, and this is recorded for each year that the asset is leased here. So first thing we have to do is we have to uh, credit our cash account here for, in this case, for $22,250 for that lease payment that's made to the company or the leasing company each year and then we have a prepaid lease or prepaid lease here and that we would debit here for twenty two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars that's debited here or uh, signed as a prepaid lease because the lessee pays the payments here at the beginning of each year so they record it as a prepaid asset here and then at the end of the year we would uh, take that debit amount here and credit it uh, for $22,250 and then we'd recognize it here as a lease expense or we'd debit our lease expense here on our income statement for $22,250. So for the operating lease here all that the leasee company does is record this payment that they're making here so they don't record any other uh, capital assets or other expenses or interest expense. Only this payment that they record here. Okay, now let's look at recording this operating lease on the balance sheet here for the lessor, the company here that's selling this asset or leasing this asset to the company that would be using it here. So for the lessor's accounting, the ownership of the asset remains with the lessor, so the depreciation and the other expenses are incurred uh, by the, for the asset here by the lessor here. So uh, going over to our amortization schedule, of course, they would recognize this payment here, but the lesser company is also going to recognize the expense here, uh, those executory costs, their maintenance costs, and that, and also this interest expense or this financing cost here for the lease. So let's go and look at our journal entries for recording this. First, we'd rec uh, record this lease here as an asset for the uh, present value of those minimum and lease payments at $85,142 and then we'd have uh, accumulated depreciation. Each year we'd recognize $8,514 for appreciation on this lease and that was based on the present value of the minimum lease payments divided by the assets life in this case uh, $85,142 divided by 10 year life here gives us $8,514 per year. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to recognize this payment here that we received from the uh, company that's using this equipment or leasing it from the lesser here. So we'd have the cash uh, payment here, a debit that amount for $22,250 each year. And then 
Uh, we have also what we'd recognize as unearned revenue in this case at $22,250 per year and then it would be debited out here at the at the end of the year and recognized as revenue here. Now the reason we do that here is because the lessee payments are received on the beginning 1-1 one, on one, the beginning of the year and it's recorded as an unearned liability and not recognized until the end of the year. And then the other thing we have is this interest payable here. That's that financing interest that we calculate here and we would credit that uh, for the interest payable for each year here and that's because the interest we we use this interest payable here because the interest is accrued at the end of the year and it's recorded at the beginning of the next year with the lease payment when it's received here so at, at the beginning of the next year we debit that interest payable and we'd recognize it as interest expense now going over to our journal entries that we'd have to uh, record here for our income statement here. First we'd have this leased revenue here. We'd credit that for the uh, payment that we receive from the com uh, leasing or the company that's paying us here for that lease uh, for $22,250 per year here. And then we have executory costs or these would be expenses that would rec be recognized each year for debit those for $2,000 per year for each year that we this company uh, this assets being leased here and then the interest expense and that's for so the financing that interest cost that would be debited here as an expense recognized each year here and then we have the depreciation expense also here we debit that for that eighty five hundred and fourteen dollars per year so with the capital lease here the leaser company here has takes ownership or remains the owner of this asset and then all those depreciation and those other expenses plus recording the asset itself remains on the balance sheet here for the lesser company.